All right, uh, let us pray. God, we come before you thanking you for who you are, what you do, and what you have done for us. Um, I pray that you um, bless this time, open up your word, um, and I pray that we, we receive something from it that maybe we've never seen before, or we interpreted a different way that brings us closer to you and opens our eyes more. We ask this in your holy and mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, and it looks like Reverend Tammy is dialing in now, so I will just pause just a second. Um, this morning's discussion is around 1 John 3, 16 through 24, and there are so many themes in this passage that it took me a while to parse out which direction I thought was the most important or um, spoke to me the most, so um, I will just dig right in and um, we can we can start with the reading of the scripture, which is um, we know what love is because Jesus gave his life for us. This is why we must give our lives for each other. If we have all we need and see and see one of our own people in need, we must have pity on that person or else we cannot say we love God. Children, you show love for others by truly helping them and not merely by talking about it. When we love others, we know we belong to the truth and we feel at ease in the presence of God. But even if we don't feel at ease, God is greater than our feelings and he knows everything. Dear friends, if we feel at ease in the presence of God, we will have the courage to come near him. He will give us whatever we ask because we obey him and do what pleases him. God wants us to have faith in his son, Jesus Christ, and to love each other. This is also what Jesus taught us to do. If we obey God's commandments, we will stay and we will stay one in our hearts with him and he will stay one with us. The spirit he has given us is proof that we are one with him. This was an interesting passage and the the theme for I, I guess several weeks or months has been around love and I promise I haven't just dug through passages to to find um, uh, the never ending theme on love. Um, but since the beginning of Lent, I moved over to the lectionary calendar and have been following the lectionary, um, especially in the, in the New Testament verses or, or passages, and have really been enjoying the, um, the overarching theme of, of course, during Lent, it's uh, the life of Christ. Um, and, and I've continued through that, but a couple of things that came out in this passage that I thought were really interesting and um, bore some, some further thought and discussion. Um, you know, so much around this time of the year and leading up, in, leading up to Easter, there's so much around um, the love of, of Christ and the salvation that we have through him, um, which I don't want to um, negate by any stretch, but this, this verse in particular got me, uh, or this passage got me to thinking a little bit more about um, the, the way it opens, which is we know that we know what love is because Jesus gave his life for us. This is why we must give our lives for each other. Well, at no point are we asked to, um, to be crucified for the salvation of others, right? But at the same time, when I started looking through and, and thinking through the overall life of Christ, and if, if he was an example uh, and a testament of love, then how can we take that and um, modernize that today while also looking back to see the example that Christ gave us. So a couple of things that I found in uh, the New Testament around the life of Christ and, and what examples he set. Number one, he showed compassion. And if you think back to the feeding of the 5,000 in Matthew 14, there were a multitude of people who were hungry and he had no responsibility to to do anything about it, yet he showed compassion and fed them, which I thought was a really good reminder when we look at, at modern day America, modern day world, modern day church, um, showing compassion is such an important piece of how we can show up and love others. Um, the, the next one that, that came through loud and clear was um, looking for the good in others. And this one I thought was really interesting. It's based on a passage um, in Luke 15, um, where Jesus specifically went and dined with, and I put in quotes, the others, because these were the people who um, the, the religious organization that was um, looked down on other groups. And 
you know, these were the people who were not in the, the Christian in crowd. And I thought it was interesting as a reminder that, that Christ actually, he sought out the, the people on the fringe um, and did so, of course, while showing compassion. Another piece that came up that was really interesting to me was out of Luke, and it said that he led with grace. Um, everyone was amazed at his gracious words, and they were so amazed that they were actually, they, they closed this particular passage by saying, isn't this Joseph's son? Um, so people were absolutely astonished by, um, by his grace and the way that he spoke and how he interacted um, with others. Going a little bit further, he met others' physical and spiritual needs. And this to me was really interesting because when you look at, at the miracles that he, that he did, so much of the time he, he met the physical need first and then he started having a conversation about the spiritual needs. And I, I was reading something the other day that uh, it, it, it said if you, um, if you feed a man fish and then you teach him to fish, he's more likely to learn how to fish because he's not hungry. And I thought that that was a really good um, thing to remember around working through someone's spiritual needs. Um, we need to make sure that their physical needs are met as well. And, and you know, if, if people are hungry or they're cash strapped and they can't think about anything beyond the next paycheck, et cetera, then how do we help overcome those barriers so that we can help them meet their spiritual needs? And then all of this to me was just a really nice way of wrapping up um, how Christ was an example of love and he demonstrated love going back to the first passage or the first verse in this passage, but also in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So to me, it was just such a great reminder and example of so often, you know, growing up in a, in a very evangelical church, it was evangelism all the time and God can work out the rest later. Well, since we're here and we're in the, in the, the now, um, I, I think it's our responsibility to help those around us with the physical needs that they have um, while also showing them love to connect them with the spiritual solution that we have, which is Christ. So in looking at that, I, I wanted to start thinking about, okay, who are the groups that we need to talk about today? Um, and really, you can just go out, you know, I'm looking out my window and, and thinking about my neighbors around, um, around my neighborhood, but um, gender equality, um, you know, and, and I'm not going to get political preachy, but, you know, if women make 84 cents on every dollar that a man makes, um, yet we're all equal in the eyes of Christ, uh, that to me is a problem. So how are we creating equality in, um, in gender to ensure that, that people's needs are met and that people are respected? Um, the, the poor and our homeless. You know, it, it astonishes me the number of homeless camps that we have in Sacramento, and there are amazing organizations who, who are working through um, providing support for the, the homeless and um, for those who are hungry. Um, but, you know, is there something that we Midtown Collective can do, should do, need to do, are called to do um, that we're not doing? Another group is um, refugees, immigrants. Um, you know, I'm I try to not watch the news um, as much as I was watching, but um, what is our responsibility um, in, in protecting refugees and immigrants, uh, be them legal or illegal? Um, you know, I, I'm taken back to the verse of um, when, when Christ said that um, what you do to the least of these, you do to me. Well, if that's the case, then I think we have a lot to answer to, um, just as people in general. Um, and, and I try to, to keep that in the back of my mind um, when I'm casting a vote, um, figuring out where to give my time and money, et cetera. Um, different races. Um, this has been you know, a, a big issue nationally and globally. Um, and to me, this is just such a good reminder that um, I will never understand what it's like to be black, but I can stand um, with people who are and fight for equality and, and equity and all that I do. And I think that that's what Christ would have asked us to do as well. Um, the, the gay community, the trans community, um, this, this entire group of people um, 
these were others as well, or are others as well. So how do we show Christ's love and do what Christ did and show the example, which is to love all? So these were just a couple of examples that I saw and thought about as I was reading this particular passage on if, if Christ is the example um, of love and we're supposed to evangelize that love, then how do we do that? And how comfortable are we doing that? Not only as, as a collective, but also as individuals. Uh, so to me, it was, a, it was a really good meaty passage to get into and, and about halfway through the week as I was reading it and praying on it um, and praying about it, it, it just made me feel icky that I'm not doing enough and that I'm not, um, not meeting the needs of everyone. And there are some people in some groups that I don't want to deal with. Um, and that's so not Christ-like um, that it's embarrassing to say. Uh, so that's been what I've been burdened about um, this week quite a bit is how to overcome um, loving some of the others that I don't necessarily want to love as much. Um, so that was, that was my, my take from this passage and from this reading. Um, I, I summed it up with, we see labels and we're really good at labeling ourselves and labeling others, um, but we should see opportunities to love instead of seeing those labels. So that was, that was what, what I came to, to the week with and have been wrestling through this week with. Uh, and I would love to know if any of you have any thoughts, ideas, or differing opinions, um, because I always welcome those. <laughs> um, do you want us to talk now or when you finish? Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm finished as finished as going to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, first of all, thank you for just your awareness of so many groups that are marginalized and oppressed and uh, live under daily fear of their lives being safe just to walk down the street. I, um, I stand with you in the space of, I am not a trans person. And so I don't know their journey. And, um, but, you know, when you look at the statistics and um, how many trans women are just murdered for just existing. So thank you for your awareness uh, to start there. Um, and then I just say that <clears throat> there are so many groups that we can name and even more that we can't or don't name for whatever reason. <clears throat> and, and um, you know, homelessness, like you said, is on an all time, at an all time high around the nation. I don't know about in other countries, but around the nation. And um, it's um, every, on every corner, there's a person with a sign. And in my privilege, I tend to try to judge who's sincere, who's really in need and who's not. And as I continue to strive to be more like Christ in my actions, um, you know, I just call us all to consider Christ in moments like these, but also accept grace, but because it's never been God's intention for us to save all, but it is God's intention for us to love all. So um, thank you. And, and thank you for that comment. I, as you said, it's, um, as you were saying, it's, it's, not God's intention for us to save all. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, I do think it's God in, God's intention for us to see all. And as a result of that love all, which to me is, is sometimes as hard to do. Um, you know, how many times have, and maybe I'm the only person who, who does this, but I, I can't count the number of times that, you know, I have immediately fiddled with my phone, my radio, read the mail, um, looked at a street sign, looked at anything rather than making eyes, making eye contact with someone who is on the side of the street with a sign. Um, I think we often, we in general, often um, look for ways not to see um, as opposed to seeing people for who they are, which is God's creation. 
I agree. Beautifully said. Thank you for sharing, Tammy. Thoughts from anyone else? And if not, that's okay too. <laughs> well, uh, the only thought that I had that crossed my mind, there's always going to be groups of people that you won't know what's going on with them uh, so far as hidden items. I deal with epilepsy or someone else deals with a family member who might be autistic or not necessarily disabilities, but hidden things that you can't see. And you never will. And I don't know if there's any way to respond except maybe individually uh, so far as that goes. But uh, it, such things as dealing with disabilities does not make life easy, no matter who you are. Right. Right, and dealing with any type of difference. Uh, a book that I read a couple of years ago, which um, may be of interest to some of you is, it, it's a math book. And if anybody knows me, I hate math. I majored in communications for a reason because um, they didn't make us do math ever. But uh, I found a book a few years ago called The End of Average. And it, it showed how so much of our life is built around creating and, and developing for whatever is average or whatever is the most common. And when you look at um, the way that the, you know, for so long we've been built around um, common being, um, you know, when was it required for wheelchair ramps to be added to buildings? And what are all of the, the things and all of the, the parts and pieces that we have put in place or ignored, um, depending on the group, to um, in many ways, keep the others as others. So not, not creating um, accessibility in, um, in buildings. Um, you know, when you look at what's going on in some of the Southern states around voting laws, knowing that people um, who are working often minimum wage jobs are working in a time where they can't go vote. So they have to keep the polls open longer. Well, that's being changed. And you know, all of these things are being litigated um, to, to keep people from doing something. So it's keeping the others as others. And, and I think that's the most anti-God thing we can do um, to not allow for equality. And you know, the, the great thing about our faith and the great thing about, uh, about our God is he doesn't see us as others. He doesn't see this people group as more important than that people group. He sees every people group as individuals that he created and that he loves so amazingly and wants us to love as well. And to me, I think that's the most important part. Yet at the same time, it's very hard to live that because we're not perfect yet. Um, you know, I, I remember having a t-shirt as a kid that my mom regretted buying for me. It said, not perfect, but close. Um, and I've, I've held to that, <laughs> that belief for a very long time. Um, but yeah, it's whether we can see the difference or not, it's, it's how do we see people for who they are, which is God's creation and a child of God. And if we see that first, then I think nothing else really matters um, because that is the ultimate equalizer. Josh, I just want to tap on something really quickly. As you mentioned, um, the, these voting laws that are taking place, what's the most disheartening for me around some of these laws is that these legislators um, tout themselves as Christians. And um, it confuses what being a follower of Christ really is and what it really looks like. And um, those of us who are striving to align with the, the word of God in living Christ-like lives, our jobs are even harder and um, the pressure is even harder because in any given moment, if we fall short, we're automatically lumped into the category of those Christians um, who do harm to people in the name of God. Um, so that, I don't know, this came up. I don't know if I have anything profound to say. I just, um, wanted to acknowledge that. And, and I appreciate that. It's, I, I wish 
any of us had the answer on how to overcome that. Unfortunately, I, I don't see the answer, but I, I do think that it, the way that, that Christianity is, is tossed about um, in celebrity life and political life, et cetera, it does make our lives harder because we're under a, a, an even sharper or stronger microscope. And everything that we do um, is, is criticized. And I think that that in many ways keeps us on our toes, but also it's an uphill battle uh, because then we're, we're lumped in with those others. And that makes it hard for us to overcome that challenge as well. I'm, I'm spot on with you. It's, it is infuriating how many times um, people have been hurt, killed, um, judged, arrested, beaten, you, you name it, in the name of Christ, um, not just in the US, but all over the world. Um, and, and so much of that was personal greed or a desire for power. Um, and, and to me, it, it's just a constant reminder that um, how, could, how could we as people who say that we love Christ and say that we're Christians look at another one of God's creation, um, one of his children, and decide that we're better than, more important than, more worthy than, and, and treat them intentionally, treat them poorly. Or, or hurt or harm them. I just don't get it. So uh, anyone else? We're digging through meaty topics lately, which I enjoy, <laughs> um, but I struggle all week. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, next week, um, I did go ahead and read ahead, and I went ahead and put the event on Facebook. Um, it is going to be based on John 15, 1 through 8, and um, it's titled, We Are an Extension, uh, and not to, um, uh, not to, to give away the plot, but this is a very well-known passage on um, him being the vine. So, not divine, but the vine. Um, so I will be digging through that this week. And um, barring objections, I will close in prayer and then stop recording. Uh, so let us pray. God, thank you so much for the conversation we've had, for um, opening up your word and our hearts and our mind and eyes. Um, I pray that you allow us to see um, this week, see, see others who we may not have have focused on um, and, and don't let us drop our gaze um, from that person. Um, let us lock eyes and, and see your creation, um, uh, your child and someone you love infinitely. Um, bless, this, bless us this week, uh, keep us safe and uh, let us return next week uh, as we continue to dig into more scripture. We ask this in your holy and mighty name, amen. Amen.